welcome back to my YouTube channel. So please guys, don't give any spoilers. Someone already spoiled it for me, which is so annoying, but I'm not gonna spoil it for any of you guys. So just please, 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 let's take time, yeah? Let's take time. But guys, before I get into this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Y'all already know, road to 15K. Okay, so the episode starts off with Bartiz and Nancy going to a jewelry shop and getting what they call permanent bracelets. I think what makes it permanent is that it doesn't have a clasp anymore or like they fuse it together is my, um, my understanding. I don't know why they're getting permanent anything because this relationship has nothing it doesn't give any vibes, any energy or any anything that this relationship is going to be permanent. They don't even, I don't even think that they're going to get married. I think Nancy will say yes. Because I haven't actually made predictions yet. I think Nancy will say yes, but Barty's better say no. But at the same time, someone said in my comment section that um, Barty and Nancy might be this year's deep tea and shake. So we'll have to see, we'll have to see. And for me, the bracelet is not even permanent. Did you guys see the thinness of the jewelry? It's not, I'm not throwing shade, I'm just saying like, I could just yank that off. Like I had an anklet that was that size and to this day, I still can't find it. <laughs> to this day, I did not even take it off. To this day, I could not find, I still cannot find it. However, the gesture was cute. I wish this was like another couple doing it. When I even say another couple, who am I thinking of? I don't really know. But if this was a couple in love, in genuine love, this gesture would be very, very, very sweet. So then we see Alexa and her family. And I think as time is going on, I'm just really realizing that Brennan is really the best guy on this show. He really, really is the best guy on this show because his willingness and his openness to understand culture, respect it, want to get to know it. You know what I mean? He's just open-minded there's no funny business he's just trying to be a sponge and suck up all this information now a lot of what they were saying i'm not gonna lie i did not know about i don't i, I don't actually i think maybe i have one but we've never really i think yeah i have maybe like a couple actually i have a couple of jewish friends but we've never actually spoken about their traditions and stuff so i thought it was really really cool that he was open to that as he was learning i was learning we were all probably learning um so i thought that was a really really good thing i think something that doesn't cause an issue is that Brennan is not religious. Even though I think he was raised Christian, he's not religious. So with Alexa's granddad saying that your kids are gonna be Jewish, I don't think he has an issue with it because he's not religious. So I think that's actually a good thing because he doesn't, he's coming in with nothing and she's coming in with something. So we can make something out of nothing. And I thought that was good. I, I'm not gonna lie, the whole Jewish prenup thing, I ain't never heard of this before, but it's a good idea. It's a good idea. Now, is it legally binding? I don't know. But I just find it very, very interesting that even in the event of a divorce, that's basically still your wife. So according to that prenup, you might as well not divorce her because all the same responsibilities and obligations still but like still exist. So for me, it's given you might as well just stay married. That's what it's given. But what I wonder is, I wonder if Alexa's granddad is married or still married. And if he's not, if he's looking after his ex-wife. And then with Alexa's dad, of course, the woman that he's with is definitely not Alexa's mum. So I wonder, was he married to his first wife? And if so, is he still taking care of her? That's what I'm curious about. Um, because I just never heard of this before. But this is very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. So moving on, we see Zinab and Cole. And they're dancing and they're trying. They're not really giving us bare moves, but they're trying, they're trying. And it just upset me when Zinab was like, she wasn't gonna get the father-daughter dance. Like that was really, really sad and upsetting. Like it, I think it's cause marriage is really not, like the wedding's not a really big deal to me. So I don't even think about things like this, but I just felt so bad for her. I felt so, cause even the same thing with the wedding dress situation, it just seems like these are supposed to be happy moments and they are for her, but they just unfortunately remind her of like, people that are, are not in her life anymore. I think that's really, really sad. But I'm glad that she's still consistently pushing through. Um, but yeah, I do feel sorry for Zinab. So then we see Cole and Matt and they are meeting her parents and they've never met any of her potentials before because I guess with um, Colleen, they're 
five minute men so they never have met anybody that she's been interested in and overall honestly Colleen and Matt together on paper and when I mean just on paper I mean even like visually when they're not arguing they look good they act well they really really do up this couple thing and this compatibility thing strong to the point where her parents gave their approval um because I think you know I mean both of them are really really good at talking to in-laws i think they're really really good at that however when he went to the bathroom and it's so funny because it's almost like they definitely tell them to excuse themselves because unless he's doing a number two there's no reason for him to be gone that long but the mum and the dad was like as long as he respects you so i wrote he respects you dot 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 sometimes and i think there are times where he really really does and he come across like an amazing couple but there are those moments where he does too much and things go hey what and of course the parents don't know because she's not disclosing it and of course if my daughter was disclosing that kind of information to me you ain't marrying him you're just not so i think she's keeping those things close to her chest not only just not only that she doesn't open up a lot but also because she doesn't want them to think about him in a in a negative way and she did mention that her fear is that he's going to run away now, Colleen, baby girl, that fear is not going to change overnight. The only how you can figure that out is if you give him another chance. Now, for me, I don't have another chance for him. So, realistically speaking, when he wanted to pack his bags that that other night, he would have went. He would have went back to I don't know, where he, his mama house or wherever he came from. I don't know. He would have just gone because at this point, we're not doing that back and forth. Me, not me and you. We're just not. So. I, I I see her fear, but at the same time, I won't feel sorry for her if anything goes mad because you have all the signs there and it's clear as day. So, so then we see SK and Raven and they're going on a super, super cute day. I think it's like a gondolier. I think that's what they call it. And it like on the river, it, it looked beautiful the way the sun was just hitting. Everything just was looking good. And I'm sorry, why does SK have beef or have, is going to war, is going to battle with this word basic? Why is he running away from this word basic? I, I actually don't know. Why is he fighting so badly to be complex and edgy and layered? And just relax. What will be will be. If that's what you are, you don't have to say it. Do you know what I mean? Just relax. And let it be organic. But I, I'm sorry, I'm starting to just... When he's speaking, I'm just starting to just look at him like... Because I don't believe him. I don't believe him. I don't believe him. I don't so they're speaking about him going to school and how is it like they're gonna get through it and stuff like that and he's talking about yeah whatever dreams you have i'm gonna adopt your dream because like, like, like they're mine because we're gonna be one and for me he's giving lip service he's giving lip service because if this was the case he would have said mom that's not what i want fall back of course in the most respectful way because we ain't trying to upset no nigerian mom period but that's how he would have said it but that's that that message hasn't been translated not at all and of course i'm sure he's had other girlfriends so if he was this really like liberal like like not traditional person i think his mom would be somewhat clued up by now but apparently she is not so yeah i just mm. the day was cute but i'm not buying any of it i'm actually not buying any of it so then we see colleen and matt and he takes her to an aquarium date which i thought was super super cute and that's the thing that's annoying when it's good it's good but from the negative act negativity i've seen i think for me it's a straight up no um colleen did say she doesn't feel like oh that she can say she sees the rest of her life with him because he consistently runs i was glad that she said that and I was also glad, even though he was coming across quite forceful when he was telling her, say what you want to say, say what you want to say, say what you want to say. And I was like, oh, okay, relax. I understand why he was saying that because Colleen does need to boss up. But at the same time, she might be scared. Now, scared of upsetting him and then just actually scared. We don't know, guys. We actually don't know because I was surprised that he didn't turn up. I was really surprised of how he handled her basically saying that love is not enough and that she doesn't, like, that she doesn't really see her like she can't say forever right now because of the way he behaves so I, I i understand why she was apprehensive but at the same time i think he needs with him he needs absolute transparency because his mind does not need to run wild with him he don't actually need that he did say that he is bad at his expressing himself um 
you are very bad at expressing yourself at, at times, especially when you're angry. Even your friends that made a joke of it that you like to shout, you see that? All that type of stuff has to stop. It has to stop because you can't argue with a bin. You ain't gonna argue with me. You're not gonna shout at me, you can shout at the bin. You, you really can. And just one more comment. I did find it annoying when he was trying to pry the thing out of her. He said, stop playing games. She wasn't playing any games in that moment. Like, he, like at this point, you're the yo-yo, you're the game. She's not playing any games. You've put her in a position where she doesn't feel comfortable sometimes to express herself. So I think Matt needs to rem remember he's the one that really needs to work. I, I do think he was, I would give him that. I, don't, I do think he was acknowledging that. I don't, wanna, I don't want you to feel like I'm the only one receiving good things and you're not. But I think he really, really needs to work on things. But I'm just glad in this conversation he was able to stay PC. So then we see Zinab and Carl and they have a date on the river as well. And remember in the, in, the, in the last episode I just said about, I feel like Nancy and Bartise are just trying to get to the goal of marriage. It seems like Carl and Zinab are doing the same thing. Cause even when he prayed, he said, Lord, give us hope until the day of our wedding. What about post wedding? Y'all don't need hope then? Y'all need hope period. So it just seems like everyone's trying to reach this goal of marriage just to be like, oh, I've, I've gotten married. No, you, let's not waste our time. Let's not, like, let's not actually waste our time. Even though you guys are probably not legally married. Let's not even wait. Let's not even play like that. Like me personally, I'm not wearing no white dress. I'm playing. Like for me, I'm not putting on the white dress just to come upstairs and say, no, I'm not doing all that theatrics. So that's just me personally, but I'm just not seeing I'm not seeing yes from them. I'm, I'm really not. I'm really, 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 really not. I will be surprised if they really get married because I just don't see it. I just don't. So then we now go to Brennan and Alexa. And honestly, he gets 10 points for me for riding a motorbike. I love that. I've never been on a motorbike before. I would love to. I thought that was very, very attractive. Um, and honestly, he is the only consistent husband. He is very, very sweet. Even looking at the flashbacks, I was like, Brennan is so sweet he is so sweet and their love story was cute as well well that was like a nice date to have had um alexa is very lucky so even though her friends think that okay maybe she is she deserves this she deserves that she has got a really good thing with this guy called brennan he's really here for her he really is adapting with her he really is compromising with her so it it, it really is going to depend on her because i think he's going to say yes it depends on her and she was making it seem like oh i'm only gonna know I, I i think she's just doing lip service i actually think they're both gonna get married in my opinion that's what at least that's what i think um but she was trying to give us lip service so then we see nancy and bartice and they're having their dinner and nancy at 31 years old living in texas says that she ain't never had a rib how you ain't never had a rib unless you're a vegetarian or vegan how you ain't never had a rib like if i ever go to texas that's what i'm going there to eat barbecue i'm eating brisket i'm eating lamb chops i'm eating burgers i'm eating ribs i'm eating pulled pork i'm eating everything so how do you live in texas and you ain't got no what no it's actually impossible i'm sorry guys that was for me the shocking the most shocking part in the episode we ain't never had a rib that is really insane so then they are I, I, i'm not gonna lie i think bartice was trying to say some romantic things guys if i'm if i'm so honest everything went over my head i don't even remember if he said any he might have said some nice stuff i really don't know but when he was talking i don't feel like he wasn't saying anything for real so i couldn't really keep up with him because i don't think he was really saying anything really worth listening to and nancy's here lying talking about oh i picked the perfect guy how how is that your definition of perfect like honestly nancy are we missing something baby because i'm not understanding how you would define your relationship or bartice as a person period as being the perfect guy based on what the dinner just the dinner alone because it's not based on the last couple of weeks that we just seen it, it surely can't be that like i don't know if you got amnesia or something like that but it's not giving away space that gave it's, it's 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 really not so then we see carl and zinab and honestly guys they were trying to stress me out because this was the last this is the last part of the of, of my review because this this episode much didn't happen but carl and zinab these two need to just lock it off honestly you guys don't even put on the suit don't put on the dress let's just finish it here 
so this is the day before the bachelor and bachelorette party the last day they get to see each other before the wedding and this is how these two are behaving so cole is trying to cook for zinab and it's the gesture yeah it is the gesture of it because i'm sure she's been complaining about him not cooking for her and her doing all the cooking so he decided to do something nice the last day before they don't see each other before the wedding and he ends up cooking for her um which i thought yes was a good gesture now for me i was getting annoyed because he was supposed to be cooking and she's here taking over and i think even though it's just cooking it's a representation of probably how she behaves throughout their relationship or to do with other household things or she'll just take over if he's not doing things correctly she'll take over and then that basically lets him know i'm not doing it right let me do it i'm doing it better than you so when he mentioned how he feels inferior i think it's things like that now don't get me wrong am i eating unseasoned chicken absolutely not not in this life the next one or the one that happened beforehand i don't eat like white chicken i just don't that's just not me yeah i don't eat unseasoned chicken i will just but i think you can tell him maybe but you don't need to do it you could be like please can you add some more and there's ways to do it but she says they're very stern like if you were like please don't give me this unseasoned chicken add a little bit of this this that and the third make it playful you see how i was still smiling even though i'm really dead ass serious don't ever try that rubbish with me but there's ways to be playful about it but i think she, everything is so serious her delivery is so stern she seems very frustrated so that's why he's having a problem with her because and that's why he's feeling like he's inferior because it's almost like i can't do anything right and instead of you to just make something like hearted it's almost like you're criticizing me and telling me that i'm wrong it's like she's scolding him and he's her pitney that's why he was like he feels inferior and i understand it completely where he's coming from but at the same time i ain't trying to eat no season un i mean unseasoned chicken i'm not so he did end up saying that she doesn't know how to have fun and that's something i've said previously too many times too many times and i completely completely agree and he said he doesn't want to force this relationship now the use of the word force already indicates to me that this relationship needs to go where in the bin because it's been forced Cole, it's been forced i don't understand how we just get into this conclusion right now it's been forced you guys are incompatible on so many things do you think i'm going to be in a relationship with somebody that makes me feel small this is the whole patronizing thing i'm oh, not patronizing passive aggressive but she probably is patronizing to some degree as well so is that a relationship you want to be in where you feel like your playful nurse is is taken as a as a disrespect and then the whole mood changes he said that there's times where every 20 minutes something happens now of course it probably isn't that frequent but the fact that it even feels that way that there's always something happening is that someone that you want to marry absolutely not so i don't understand what we're here fighting for zinab is here on the same nancy wave talking about oh a thousand percent with what happened in the last two oh, a thousand percent marry you was it not less than two weeks ago but the whole conversation about colleen coming up at the um what was what party when when the couples basically just came together and, and the people that weren't picked also came that was literally la that was literally the last episode we saw no it wasn't last sorry that was episode seven so that was not two weeks ago so i'm confused on a thousand percent how did you get to a thousand is it a thousand percent out of like one million because i don't understand how it's a thousand percent sure you would have married him based on what has happened in the last two weeks again am i missing something because the certainty that these women have i'm confused because it's not adding up with the man and it's not adding up with the footage that was that was seen it's just not adding up um don't get me wrong would i find cole's immaturity at times or over because sometimes for me he's overly playful annoying absolutely but i don't think it would shift my mood as much now should we be using nerf guns in the kitchen while the chicken is cooking okay no but i think the fact that it just negatively it brings down the whole mood i think that's where the issue lies but he is childish but you know this so we're not gonna act brand new you know this you know this you know this so why would you zinab want to be in a relationship where you find this person extremely annoying to the point where it affects your mood and then you guys have an argument and then you have to leave the house so even though it's a small thing it's a he's it's his character trait and you're, you're not messing with it you don't like it and it's not an issue with that but i don't understand what you guys are fighting for another people another couple that is fighting for their dear lives for no reason it's really not worth the fight and then she started mentioning the things about him that she finds quite annoying leaving dishes in the sink letting the rubbish or the trash pile up 
leaving towels on the floor and he was like oh well you put your hairs in the sink and you don't flush and she was like oh the person that comes after can flush both of you guys are nasty because all that why would you your hair just be sitting in the sink i mean sitting in the in, in, in the toilet and you don't flush like i think both of them have weird habits but the thing is everyone has weird habits everyone has things about each other that they don't like it's just that is it affecting you to the point where you get so irritable and cole doesn't get that irritable but zina does so and i'm not saying she can't have a problem with his cleansiness it's just that you either accept it or you leave him alone it's only one of the two so yes and i definitely think there is a lack of laughter in their relationship 100 percent. i've been saying it he feels like she nitpicks and puts him down consistently that's not wifey material at least for cole for cole that's not why that should not be why he should not even be trying to say oh are you gonna marry me are you gonna marry me talking about he's the most serious person about the marriage in this whole process you're actually not i don't know how you quantified that because you, if you're in the program by yourself then of course you are but if you talk about everybody else, I don't think that is the case. I, I, from the way Cole behaves, it's not the case. Even though, yes, he is Christian and he has been married before and I, you would like to think he would take things more seriously. If he was really serious about this process, he wouldn't even, they, them two wouldn't even be getting to the aisle. Honestly, they, they actually wouldn't be getting there if he was serious. She did say that they don't have enough problems to say I don't, but you guys don't have enough goodness to say I do. Them problems are loud, yeah? Those problems, me personally, because they're fundamental to you, you both's character, the way in which you communicate, the way in which you receive each other's um, mannerisms and, and, and behavior, the way, the way each other negatively affects each other and the mood it gets you guys in. They, they, you don't easily bounce back from this because if you guys did, she wouldn't have walked out and this issue is now unresolved. And then now you guys are going to be doing, trying to marry each other after just after that argument happened. It, like, it doesn't make sense. For me, let it go, really let it go. And for me, I found Cole absolutely insane when he asked her, did she have bipolar? Because it seemed like he was asking for real. And when I feel like he's asking for real, I feel like he was almost somewhat name calling. Just because someone acts in a way that you don't understand or can be one extreme on the next doesn't mean you're gonna now start diagnosing them with bipolar. I just thought that was the maddest question. I was like, is he serious? Like, are you actually serious? Like, most of the time, with, when it comes to Zinab and her insecurities, I'll be on his side because I couldn't put up with this rubbish. But when he questioned her about her, my, I'm just like, are you, are you serious? Is this the moment right now? Right now? Even if it's a joke, this is not the time to make a joke. And if you're serious, that's not a serious question. You can't be serious. So then when Zinab said, are you projecting? I said, oh, that was deep. I don't know. But... She ended up leaving. I just feel like, what was this conversation? This conversation was indicative that you guys do not need to be together. This conversation was so weird, so unnecessary, but hitting below the belt. What are, what are we holding on to, guys? You guys are so thirsty to be in to, to to be married, not even in love, to be married, that you're willing to accept things that are just not for you. Both of them deserve better, and they're not going to get better from each other. So they should both say no at the aisle or whoever says it first, whoever, whatever, but they should not be getting married point blank, period. That's it. So guys, thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in episode 10 review tomorrow. Bye.